John Napier was a Scottish scientist born in the 16th century who spent much of his time inventing ways to make calculations easier. He's best remembered for developing methods so that multiplication and division can be carried out using the simpler operations of addition and subtraction. Napier developed logarithms in 1614 and a device called Napier's Bones or Napier's Rods in 1617. Both these methods became commonly used in science and commerce. Napier's Bones consist of wooden or bone rods with figures engraved on them. Numbers are formed using these rods and then calculations carried out on them in a straightforward way. Let's see how Napier's bones can be used to solve a multiplication problem. Say we want to multiply 243 by 6. First we take the number rods 2, 4 and 3 and put them next to each other to form the number 243. Then we put another bar called the index rod marked with the numbers 1 to 9 to the left of the rods showing 243. To do our calculation we focus on the intersection of the number 6 on the index rod and the number 243 shown by the other rods. When we add the numbers in the boxes separated by lines in the intersection from top to bottom the result comes out. Of course you might say it's easier to multiply 243 by 6 in the usual way rather than using the bones. But the advantage of using Napier's device becomes more obvious when we need to multiply big numbers. For example, suppose we want to multiply 71,859 by 49. First we create the number 71,859 with the rods and place the index bar on the left. As in our earlier example, we add the numbers in the boxes step by step from top to bottom as shown by the intersection of rods 4 and 9 to get the result. Using Napier's bones, the calculation is easy. Now let's see how we can use the bones to do division. The process is quite different from that of multiplication. Say we want to divide 972 by 27. We first create the divisor 27 by putting the 2 and 7 number rods next to each other. Then we place the index bar on the left and we're ready to do the calculation. We start by adding the numbers in the boxes in each row from right to left. Then we create a template like this. Next we separate the digits of 972. We could do this to give 9 and 72 or 97 and 2, but in separating the digits we need to create a number that's greater than or equal to the number in the first row, which is 27. Since 9 is less than 27, we can't separate the numbers 9 and 72. So the separation has to be 97 and 2 because 97 is bigger than 27. Next, we need to find a number in the rows that is equal to or less than 97. It's 81. We write 81 below 97 and place 81's index number to the right of the template, that is 3. In order to make the number of digits the same, we add a 0 to the right of 81 and also a zero to the right of the index number. Now we subtract 810 from 972 to give the result 162. 
We can't separate the digits 1, 6, 2 since the separated numbers 1 or 16 are both less than 27. So we need to consider the whole number 1, 6, 2. Again, we look for a number that is equal to or less than 162. There is 162 among the numbers in the rows. We write this number below the subtraction and write its index number to the right of the template. When we subtract, the result is 0. In order to get the result of 972 divided by 27, we just need to add the numbers 30 and 6 in the right side of the template. So there's the answer. 972 divided by 27 is 36. Again, it seems like a very long method of doing an easy calculation, but the benefit of Napier's bones becomes more obvious when dealing with bigger numbers. Let's do a division with bigger numbers. Say we want to divide 15,575,502 by 5,287. What do we do if there's a remainder? We can illustrate this with a simple example. If we were to divide 81 by 36. We make 36 using the third and sixth rods. Then we add the numbers in the boxes row by row. We can't separate the digits of 81 because both 8 and 1 are less than 36. When we look at the numbers in the rows, 72 is the closest number that's smaller than 81. So we choose it and write it below 91. And also write its index number to the right of the template. Because 81 and 72 have the same length, we don't need to put in any zeros to equalize the number of digits. We just subtract 72 from 81. The result is 9, which is less than the first row number, 36. So the result is 2 and 9 over 36, or 2.25. Here's how we convert the fraction to decimals using Napier's bones. First we add a point to the right of the 2 and a 0 to the right of the 9. Looking at the rows we can see that the nearest number to 90, less than 90, is 72, index number 2. So we write 72 below 90 and add the index number to the right of the point. 
After adding the index number and doing the subtraction, the result is 18, which is again less than the first row. Therefore, we need to add a zero, giving 180. Finally, if we look at the fifth row, it's 180. The index number is 5, and we add this number to the right of the template to give the final answer in decimal, 2.25. Although in our age of computers and electronic calculators we no longer need Napier's bones, they remain one of the most important advances in the study and practical application of mathematics.